Hi there, I'm Laura Brandenburg from Bridging the Gap, and today we're going to talk about how to conduct a requirements review. Now, a requirements review, or otherwise known as a requirements walkthrough, this is essentially a meeting where you gather together all of your stakeholders and walk through some piece of requirements documentation, whether that's a use case or a business process or an agile list of user stories or a product backlog, anything like that, and you walk through it whether that's page by page or line by line or item by item, to ensure that what's written and represented in there represents everyone's complete understanding of what is to be accomplished in this particular project or body of work. Simple enough, right? Boring enough, right? Um, but also valuable enough that it simply just has to be done. So all too often, I've seen this extremely important step in the requirements process get skipped, and then often to the detriment of the project as a whole, and especially to the detriment of getting all of the stakeholders on the same page about the scope of a project. And as business analysts, we are responsible for gaining alignment, and alignment happens through a requirements review. Now let's just talk about a few of the, the reasons that you still might be like, Laura, I hear you but I don't wanna do it. Often people will say, well, you know, I can just email the document out for review. That way, like everyone can do it when it works for them. And I might even get better input. Now let's be honest here. In today's workplace, reviewing that document is not on the like list of top priorities for a lot of your stakeholders. And they are probably multitasking really often. So one, you might not receive feedback whatsoever. And two, very, very few stakeholders are going to provide their best input sitting at their desk reviewing it independently. And those that do that, will you want to give them time ahead of time to actually review the document so they can bring that input to the meeting, which is also going to help other people in the room provide feedback as well. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, a second reason that people say like, no, nope, don't want to do a requirements review is because you want an email sign off that's traceable. Now, a requirements walkthrough doesn't necessarily say that you can't also have some sort of email or written sign off. If that's required in your organization, that's more common when there's significant regulatory practices in place. Um, so you can do both. Um, the requirements review, though, is the process that really should precede any sort of form formal or formality type based sign off that's really just about kind of having everyone's signature. The review is going to get everyone truly on the same page. Then you might say, well, that's great, Laura. I know I should be doing this, but my stakeholders, they just don't have the time, right? And so if that is the case, there's one or two one of two bigger picture things going on here. Either you don't have the right stakeholders, or you're working on the wrong, wrong project, or I'll add a third actually, or you haven't accurately and fully explained to them why this is important and what the value is of completing this activity. Right, so your stakeholders have the time for what they see is important. And spending an hour or a couple of hours in a room finalizing exactly what that project is supposed to do before your organization makes an investment in the technology side of that project is, is an important thing to do. And so you really do need to communicate to them why this is important and help them create the time. Finally, you might say, yeah, that's great. That's all that, you know, traditional requirements practice back in the day, right? We're agile, so we, we don't have to do this. Um, and I will just say, like, when you are in an agile team or working in an agile environment, reviewing the requirements or whatever it is that you're recalling the requirements with your business stakeholders prior to sprint planning or prior to, like, getting the technology initiative initiated is even more important. Because in, in instead, in this case of reviewing a bigger document like a BRD, which you're like, we don't do BRDs, so we don't have to do reviews. No, that's not the case. You could focus on reviewing the product backlog items for the next few months and making sure the ranking is correct and the understanding of each of those items is clear. Or you could review the details of the next few user stories that are going to be addressed in the upcoming sprint. So you can use the same exact process, you're just reviewing a different type of deliverable. So now let's talk about how to actually facilitate a requirements review. So I've got a four-step process for you. 
first you set the stage. So you want to send out an email or a calendar invite um, with that document or list or spreadsheet or whatever that is attached so people can review it ahead of time and a description of how the, the meeting will go. Like every good meeting has an agenda, right? And your agenda for this meeting is essentially to walk through that requirements, re requirements document. You also, when you set the stage, want to let everyone know what their role is and so that they can provide feedback on the requirements given like their understanding of the role. Like Bob from accounting, I really need to, your understanding of the accounting process to, to make sure we haven't look, overlooked anything. And you know, from customer service, I want you to be thinking through what kinds of customer service requests we might get around this or issues we might have and make sure you're bringing those in that we've addressed those fully in those requirements, right? That gives people that sense of purpose, which also helps give them the reason to make time for your meeting. And so you want to send that in your meeting request. You also want to reiterate that at the beginning of the meeting so that people will remember. So the second step is to be prepared. So you want to have that document where you can easily share it. If it's a virtual environment, you would be you know, sharing it online through a Zoom session or something like that. Um, if you are in a physical meeting area, you want to hopefully have that projected somewhere. Um, and you want to maybe, if it's not an entirely long document, have a few extra hard copies for those stakeholders you have that are like going to come in and be relatively unprepared for the meeting. Maybe they have taken a quick look before they came in, but they didn't print it out or they forgot to. Um, that's more of a use your judgment um, on your on the, how things work in your company and like who you need to be prepared for and if they tend to need you to have hard copies for them. Um, the third is to actually lead the walkthrough and you want to go through this section by section, give everyone an appropriate amount of time to read considering the requirements in that section and ask for comments clarifications and questions. Ensure the discussion focuses on the requirements, not how to build them or not what tasks need to be done or on the marketing plan, right? None of these other things is on the requirements, it's on the scope of what's going to be built. And as, as the review group agrees to updates, you know, you can note those on your hard copy. If you're a really great typist, you can be like actually typing them into the document. Often that slows things down a little bit too much. So you want to maybe just add notes in your document where you're going to go back later and actually finesse the wording. And then finally, step four is asking for sign off. This is like actually going around the room and saying, provided I make all the edits that we talked about today and distribute an updated copy, is everyone prepared to sign off on these requirements? And are there any lingering questions or concerns? And you want to look for everyone in the room or on your Zoom session um, and really get that visual cue. And if you can't get a visual cue in a virtual environment, if people don't have their video on, you might ask people to actually verbally say or type in the chat, right? Like, yes, I'm, I'm ready to sign off, right? So you just have that cue. Um, it's not a formal sign off from a regulatory perspective, but it gives you that confidence as the business analyst that you've really gained agreement and alignment on those requirements. Okay, so this has been quite a meaty video for you, but before we close, I do want to cover just a few of the more common issues that people um, face when they're doing this. So one is that they just do the requirements walkthrough too early, right? So as a bit, you don't want to do this when there's major issues at, <laughs> at stake in the requirements. Like this is not the tool or the technique to use to figure out like what the requirements should be. You will have gone through discovery and analysis and some early validation and worked through your issues list and had a general agreement. This is like the final, like, do we really have everyone on the same page sort of discussion, right? That's when you use this technique. Um, you don't want to read every requirement aloud, right? People don't need you to read things to them. Um, I've done it and it's worked okay, but it's really inefficient, so I wouldn't suggest it. Instead, just go through section by section that people can read in the meeting. 
Um, another common mistake is not including the right people. So the review should include somebody who's accountable to every area of the business that's going to be impacted by those requirements. Um, so examples could include marketing, operations, product management, customer service, accounting, finance, IT, right? And sometimes you'll need more than one person from a group because of the decision matrix in that group. But really making sure you have the people who can actually um, have the authority to, to sign off and say yes. Now here's a fun one, like nobody says a word, right? <laughs> like you're in this meeting and it is like, this is why we dread them because like nobody is saying anything. And you really wanna be prepared with some questions to get the conversation going. And if you need help coming up with questions, you can download our free requirements test checklist example to get the idea. There's a link to it below this video. Um, because often like people just don't want to be the first one to say something or come off as overly critical. So, you know, giving questions or like, are you sure we got this right? Or we were talking about whether this word or this word was what's really reflected. Are we all good with this particular word? Right. You could also like just gently throw in a few mistakes. Some people are really uncomfortable with that. And then you can point them out so that people, um, learn that it's safe to point out mistakes. Right. And we're not just here to like all nod our heads. Um, and finally, here's another final challenge that could happen is that the business uncovers a fundamental flaw in the project, right? So no matter how much prep work you do and how you've kind of gotten everybody aligned coming into this meeting, somebody can come with like a middle of the night insight the day before your meeting and just blow all the work you've done to pieces. So if this happens, just take a deep breath. It's just the requirements. Right? Ask the group if they feel like this issue needs to be dealt with to finalize the requirements for the project. And if yes, you have two choices. You can refocus that meeting to deal with this pressing issue, or you can disband the meeting and work on a plan to deal with it ASAP. And you also, of course, want to let your project manager and stakeholders know and probably get a little outside guidance um, to make sure this is really a critical issue. Sometimes things that seem critical in the moment are really not as big as they were when or that they seemed. Um, so if you have invested a lot of time in this in this to get to this point, like really see how you could kind of approve still a part of the document or come back around um, and isolate that issue and its impact so that you can move forward with a, with a piece of the work. Because most often by this point, like people are ready to get started, you've put a lot of work into this and you're gonna be delaying the project if you don't move forward. So those are my thoughts and advice for you on how to conduct a requirements review. Leave a comment below with any questions or ideas or suggestions that you have. And also, if you want more support from Bridging the Gap around your requirements discovery and analysis process, you can download our free requirements checklist. So this is um, from our requirements discovery checklist pack. It's one of the examples uh, that shows you how to think about a specific domain area and what kinds of questions you should be asking to really get to the root of the requirement. So it'll help you go into your next requirements review with some more ideas or questions to ask and be more prepared. Until that next time, I'm Laura Brandenburg from Bridging the Gap. We build our profession one business analyst at a time, and our biggest success is seeing you succeed in your career.